If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. So in this module, we're going to be looking at the API for the IoT controller. And specifically for this module, we're going to look at authentication, the authentication process, and how the uh, steps for authentication within the IoT controller work. The first thing to look at from a, a, an authentication perspective is the architecture. So we have our devices out on the edge using various different IoT protocols, connecting in through our gateways and into our IoT controller. The northbound interface connects the IoT controller to the application space. Now the application could be a, uh, a, an inbuilt or a uh, customer defined application. It could be using the node red flow that is integrated within the IoT controller or off site or off of the IoT controller. You might be using an SDK of your own or de developing some kind of additional third party plugin. In all cases, the application space needs to be connected and authenticated with the IoT controller. So for that, we need to do a number of things, including the basic authentication or a, a user role based authentication. That will then provide us with an access and a refresh token, and those are then used to provide full API access into the IoT controller. So the, the key things with understanding the uh, authentication steps are obviously the basic, basic authorization first. So as we look at basic authorization, we need to understand that we are going to format a, a message to the IoT controller uh, with some kind of a, a payload. Now the payload is going to consist of the username and password of the user that we want to authenticate with the controller. So what we do is we use the standard format of username colon password, but we encapsulate that and encode that using a base 64 mechanism. Once we have that payload or that message, we then need to format the request that we're going to send to the controller. So if we were using a command line tool, we would use something like curl and then we would use a get because we are, are, are we're doing a request of the IoT controller. And then we would format the header for that using an authorization basic with the username and password that has been encoded. The destination would be the IP address of the IoT controller. And the specific API call that we want to use would be slash v1 slash oauth slash login. So we are going to forward a request to that URL and with a payload authorization request to actually then have the IoT controller respond back to us. So if we send that message to the IoT controller, the IoT controller will respond back with a payload uh, with of a form of a JSON structure with two entities. One of them will be the refresh token and the other one will be the access token. And these will be the tokens which will be, which will be used by the application and using the API to then make a request for further, further access to the IoT controller. So the next uh, example we'll show is how we can then use those, those tokens using again a similar command, so curl minus x get minus kh. Then with the header, but instead of now using the, the basic, we're now gonna use a token and we provide the access token and then the destination and API call that we want to make. So in this particular case, the API call would be app v1 device that will list all devices on the iot controller okay so what we're going to do is we're going to actually use the api now to uh, to connect to the iot controller and perform some basic authorization and, and connections so what we'll do is we'll open a new uh, browser session and we will uh, connect to a, a third party base 64 encoder so what we can do here actually is we can have this third party website generate a base64 encoded username and password so what we'll do is we'll use our username so in this case is admin and our password and we can actually have the the, the website generate the header now we could do this within our application just as easily but I'm going to show you how to do this with uh, with the website so this is now the correctly encoded base64 uh, request uh, you utilizing the admin and password that I've entered and it's now encoded that data and given us the string that we need. Okay, so now we have uh, our username and password that's been correctly encoded. What we can now do is use that to connect to the IoT controller and to request the tokens. So in this example, we're going to use a curl command. So curl is a standard 
command line application running under Linux that allows us to communicate with, with third party applications. Now, there are plenty of other examples like Postman and various other different uh, tools that are available, but curl is available on pretty much every, uh, every machine, so it's a good place for us to start. So what we'll do is we'll actually format our message to make that request. So we'll use the curl command. Now I'm gonna use the minus S to make the output silent so I don't have too much rubbish to filter through. Um, we'll use the, uh, the minus X to uh, make the request because it's an HTTPS server. We're gonna make a get request and we're also gonna use a couple of additional headers, flags. So the next thing we need to do is we need to format our message that we're going to send. So we're gonna use uh, authorization uh, to authenticate. We're gonna use the type of authorization of basic now we need to put in our encoded username and password, which we've done, which we've got here, and we need to close our speech mask. So that's our authorization, that's our header that we're going to send. The next thing we need to do is we need to structure the message to communicate to the IoT controller. So we need to use the HTTPS and then the IP address of the controller, 192.168.111, in my case, dot 14. Now, the next thing we need is the actual REST API function call that we're going to use. So that is our v1 slash oauth slash login. OK, so that's very, very simple command that we're now going to send. So if we send that, we should get a response back from the IoT controller. And we do, in fact, get a response. So now if you actually see the response, we've got two uh, messages that have come back. So the, the brackets indicate that it is a JSON response and we have an access token and a refresh token. Now these are a little bit more difficult to read in this command line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a tool called JQ, which is easy to install under Linux. That will take the response back from the IoT controller and format it into a more user-friendly uh, format. So there we go. So now you can see we have a JSON structure and we have two messages that have been returned. We have our access token and we have our refresh token. So we now receive those tokens. They are now valid for uh, for eight hours or the access token is now valid for eight hours. So the key thing for us now is that we need this, uh, this access token for our main communications going forward. Okay. So what we can now do is we can use that message and that access token is to, to send a different message now to the IoT controller. So what we're gonna do is use the same format. So we're gonna use a curl minus X. We're gonna do a get request and we're going to use a, a new header. Now the header is going to be slightly different this time because we're going to use authorization again. But this time we're going to be using a token based authorization. And we need to now paste in the access token that we had. We've been assigned by the controller. And we now need to send our HTTP request again to our IoT controller. And this time the API function call that we're gonna make a request for is we're gonna ask the, the IoT controller for a list of all devices that are attached to the IoT controller. So again, very simple command using the authorization to the IP controller. And this is the API function that we're asking for. So app v1 and then a list of all devices. And here's the response that we get back. So again, you can see that we have a JSON response, but it has a lot of data in there. So again, I'm going to so I'm going to pipe the output now into our JQ tool and we'll see what the response now comes back in. Now much more user friendly. So again, we can now see our message has been returned and we now get all the information. So we can see the total number of devices that is attached is listed as one device. OK, we can see the data now that's being returned. So we have a field with only one entry in it. If we had more, it would be down here in the array. We can see that it's a, a type vape. Um, we can see the, the custom fields that have been returned. So this is our, our message coming back from the controller. So we have a vape, a sound and a ping message that has come back. We can see the last value. And then we also have a timestamp of when that message was received for each of those different messages. We can see when the device was created. We can see its current line quality indication. Now this is actually a wired device. So as a result, the LQI is set to zero. We can also see it's a gateway ID, which it obviously isn't because again, it's wired. We can see if it's been blacklisted, the time it was last seen using Epoch, the fact that it's currently connected, and we can see its name and its device EU ID and all the other information about it. So it's device manufacturer. So very quickly, just with one command, we're able to make a request into the IoT controller and it would give us a list of every single device that is connected. So that's a very simple example of how to use a command line to do authentication and a, a very quick introduction on how to use the API to just do a discovery of all devices on the controller.